Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Preston here from Bull City Reader and welcome to this week's video. It's been a few weeks since I've put up a video, so thank you for sticking around my channel and waiting for a new video. Um, if you're kind of wanting to know why, you can check out, uh, I posted about it on my Twitter. Uh, so I'll put the links down below for Twitter. I did not put on Facebook or Instagram, but uh, maybe I should next time. But I did post about it on Twitter. Um, but this video is going to be a recap on 2018, maybe some of my goals for 2019. But before I jump into the meat of the video of what it's going to be about, I just wanted to give you all a quick update. I believe it was my last video or the one before that. Uh, I mentioned that my wife and I are finally... Well, we're expecting a child. We're expecting our first baby. We've had two miscarriages up to this point, trying to start our family. Uh, we're past our first trimester. We're into our, I think it's our second trimester. Yeah, we're in our second trimester. And we actually just found out what we're going to be having. We are having a baby. <laughs> Dad joke. Um, we are having a baby boy, we found out. So we're excited about that. June for me can't get here quick enough, but I've got a lot to do because this room has to be turned into a nursery. And uh, yeah, this this room where my the bookcases are, our computer, other bookcase, that closet needs to be cleaned out. So yeah, we've got some work to do. <laughs> But anyway, guys, we're excited. Can't wait to have our first baby. Let me get this camera angle back to how I had it. Something like this, I think. Anyway, we're excited to have a baby boy. We do have a few names in our head. We're not going to be announcing the name of the baby quite yet. We're not ready to. Plus, we're still tossing some ideas around. So anyway, that's the baby update. Baby Watch 2019. Is that what we should call it? Hashtag Baby Watch. 2019 but anyway uh to the meat of the video now so you're here for my wrap up on 2018 and talk about 2019 some i do have a bunch of books that i bought and was also gifted in december with it being christmas and with me being in a reading funk i got books for christmas and i bought books trying to get out of my reading funk if you want me to do a video comment below and let me down below that you would like to see the books that have now been added to my TBR uh, for the books that I bought in December. I do want to show y'all two books from my, uh, I guess my haul. They're, they're indie authors. One of them reached out, reached out to me um, about her book and the other one I won in a giveaway. Uh, so the one I won in a giveaway is called 12, De 12 Deaths of Christmas. It's a holiday horror anthology. Um, by Paul, I think he says his name is Sading. Um, trying to get the cover in here good, but it's just not wanting to work for me. But anyway, I got this book in and wanted to show it to y'all. Um, the second book I got in, uh, the author reached out to me. She's from South Carolina. She's an indie author. Um, the book is called The Last Dragon Princess by C uh, Cynthia Payne. The cover's kind of glary, and I got the light right behind me. So hopefully I can get it in here good for you. Uh, the, sh the short blurb on the back says her birth was an, an act of treason, but now she's their last hope. Born with the marks, she must choose the next king and stand against the gods. Um, this is a standalone. It's not a series. So once you get done with the book, it, you're done. So if you want, you know, a YA, you know, fantasy book, check it out. I think it sounds interesting to me. I'll put a link down to it below in the description. Um, this is one I hope to read in 2019, um, but I did get those two books in. I got more books in, um, so if you want to see the video, like I said, just comment down below, and I'll record the video and show you what else I got in December. Overall, in 2018, according to my Goodreads, which I need to do a better job with tags on Goodreads, so maybe that should be a goal for me in 2019, get better with tags um, on Goodreads. I read about, I think it was 13 books in, in 2018, which is good. When I set a goal for myself at the end of 2017, I wanted to read at least one book a month because in 2017, I only read, I think it was three or four books. So the blog and podcast just became my main focus and I lost focus on reading. So my main, I wanted to get back into reading. Um, and that was one reason once 
the blog and podcast shut down to do a YouTube channel. Hopefully to keep me reading. I'm happy that I did meet my goal. Wish I would have read more. Once we hit the holidays in November and December, we were pretty quite busy with family, us traveling, family coming here, work was busy. I'm still busy at work uh, with it being end of the year and I'm a bookkeeper and so we've got end of year taxes plus new accounting software. So it's just been a rough time reading lately. My goal for 2819 at minimum, and like I said, I'm a slow reader, so I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but for me it's a lot, you know, just because I'm a slow reader. My goal for 2019, I would like to read no less than 12 books. Um, I would I would like to read two books a month. That's a book, every, you know, every two weeks is what I would like to do. So a total of 24 books. Hopefully I can do that. We'll see, you know. With having a baby in June, I don't know what my reading time is going to be like because this is our our first, besides the two miscarriages that we had, this is our, our first kid um, that's going to be here. So I don't, you know, I know babies take work. So I don't know what my reading time is going to be like once the baby's here. I know I'll be reading baby books, so maybe I'll do some reviews on baby books because um, we definitely want to instill reading in with our baby. But that's my goal going forward for 2019, uh, the number of books I want to read. I know other YouTubers do TBRs, and I don't really do a lot of TBR lists just because I'm a mood reader. And I don't want to say, this month I'm going to read, you know, since it's October, I'm going to read, you know, Halloween-themed books. I just, I've never been a person to do that. That's why you never see me do TBR videos, just if, you, if you're wondering. Uh, but overall, in 20, 2018, most of the books I read were pretty solid. I do have two books that stick out the most to me for uh, my favorite books of the year. Um, I know I've talked about them before, and I have them up here on the shelf. And no, it's not these books in my hand. The first book that I read that really grabbed my attention as one of my favorite books for the year is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Scythe was amazing. I did not read the second book, Thunderhead, because I heard it ended on a major cliffhanger, and we did not have a date for when um, the third book was coming out. If it's coming out this year, I might reread the series in time for the third book because I really enjoyed this world. From what I can tell, a tale. From what I can tell, with Neil Schusterman, when he writes stories, he's going to give you a story that the, the world's gonna drag you in, you're gonna love learning about the characters, but the, the topic with the storyline is always interesting. Um, the premise of Scythe is humanity has, um, humanity has overcome everything. Like there's no death, there's no sickness. Um, like humanity has over, figured out how to overcome everything. And in order to keep overpopulation from happening, there's a a group of people called scythes that have been put together in order to help control the population. And so you follow two young apprentices of a, of a scythe as they go through training and there's some head-to-head -head competition involved with it and then political stuff within the scythedom. It's, very, it's a very interesting concept. He has his Unwind series that I want to read. That's high up on my TBR and, and that deals with there was a third, a second civil war in America, and it was over abortion, if I'm remembering right. And if I'm remembering the premise of the book right, after what stopped the war was they agreed that people would have babies, but they had until, I think it was their 16th birthday, and at the 16th birthday, they could unwind them, which is saying they didn't want the kid anymore, and they send them off. Um, so it dealt with that. So anyway, Scythe, I, I love the characters, I love the world, I love the storyline. There was really nothing about this book that I didn't like. He constantly left you turning the page, wanting to know what was going to happen. There were twists and turns that I didn't see coming. Um, for a while, I, I know a, a lot, a lot. The, the people sometimes look down on YA books, but this is very solid, man. If you have not read this book, highly recommend you check it out. Um, my other favorite book of the year, um, I'll show you the American cover and then the UK cover. I prefer the UK cover, but I like them both. It's a book called Nixia by Scott Rankin. The cover's shiny, so it's probably going to glare. I've got a light back here because it's dark outside. 
when I'm recording since I got home from work. But this is the American cover for Nixia. It's, like I said, shiny. This is the cover from the UK. I absolutely love it. Uh, he is from the area I live, and I think I might have mentioned it in the video, and I can't remember. I asked him about why were there, why the covers are so different, and he told me the he if I'm if I'm remembering his answer right, uh, when I met him and had the this book signed, I need to get this one signed because I didn't know about this one until um, we saw him. Scratch that. I, I didn't ask him about the covers. He just told us because he showed us this. And I knew I was going to buy this cover once I saw it. But he, he told us the reason why these two covers were different. In America, this is marketed as a, if I'm remembering right, it's marketed more of a YA novel. And in the UK, it's marketed more as science fiction. And so that's the difference in the two. I love both covers, but I, I just love this one more. But Nixia follows a group of teens. It's a group of 10 teens who are chosen to go to a planet to mine for Nixia. They're basically told that they're going to get, I forget how much money it was, but they're set for life because they're going to get paid until they die. And so they get on the ship to go up there, and then when they're on the ship, they realize that this is a competition. They, they're told that, hey, not all 10 of you are going to get to go down and get what we told you you could get. Only eight of y'all are. Book one, Nixia. Um... Is mainly the competition. You're learning about the world they're going to. He is. You're learning about the Nixia itself. Everything about this book was absolutely fascinating. Uh, the technologies he created, the science he created, um, just everything about what Scott created with the series is amazing. I haven't read the second book yet because after book one, I really wanted to read book two, but it wasn't out. I had to wait, and I knew I'd want to wait for the final book to come out. Um, but the second book is out if you're interested. I did also get both covers for it. Here is the American Nixia Unleashed. This is the UK cover. Book one deals with them going in space on the ship to the planet. Book two deals with them on the planet. So those are my two favorite books of 2018. Um, I highly recommend those books uh, for you to check out. So definitely check those out. There are two books that I, I did not like, almost to the point of I hated them, but I know hate's a strong word. I had the book, I'm giving them away, so I'm not gonna hold up a cover, so you know I'll throw up an image of their covers on the screen. The first book is Adam Silveria's They Both Die at the End. Um, I had two major issues with the book, and then kind of a third issue that's not as big of a deal, but I still had a gripe with it. The title's obvious, they both die at the end, so it's not a spoiler. In this world, there's a company called Deathcast that will give you a call and tell you that you have, in the next 24 hours you will be dying. Um, they don't tell you how you're gonna die or when you're gonna die. We're not even sure why this company exists and that was one of my issues with the book. I wanted to know a little bit more background. Why is this company even here? Why do we need it? Is it like Scythe where we've conquered death? which it doesn't feel like it because it's set in modern day. So I don't understand the point of Deathcast and why they even exist. That was one issue I had with it. But anyway, our two main characters meet on an app that's been created called um, End Day. It's an app where you can go on there. If you're gonna be dying in the next 24 hours, people go on this app to become your friend or your friend and help you have a better last 24 hours if you would like them to like if you don't want to spend it with family and the people that will spend time with you they're either others that are on the list or people that just want to help you have a better day so our two main character guys meet um, and it's following them throughout their day and what goes on during their day um, one of the issues I had with the book is it felt too insta-love. They're At the end of the book, they're claiming their love for each other. You've only known them for like 12 hours. Um, I don't feel like you can really love somebody in 24 hours or 12 hours. It's more infatuation. Um, so I had an issue with the, the insta-love concept of the book. Just didn't care for that part. And then... You find out how one of the main character dies. He leaves it to your imagination on how another main character dies, which, I mean, 
you can guess and it's probably the correct guess but just tell us there's also a couple side characters or there's really one uh, yeah there's two side characters you meet that their stories come in at the end of the book well I mean you meet them through the book but at the end one of them's heavily involved uh, not heavily but is involved in the end of the book and one of them is going to be dying. They don't tell you how that person dies either. So if you weren't going to tell us how that person was going to die, then why did you even introduce us to the character? It just seems pointless and stupid. Um, I went on this long rant about it when I reviewed the book. Um, I'll try to throw a link to that. But it was just, the end of it was just so poorly done. And it was just like, let's get this crap over with. I want to end the book and make money. Um, is how it felt to me. You should have wrapped it up better. And it, and because of that, I will never read another book by, the, by Adam Silveri again. I have crossed him off my list of YA authors to read. After that book, I just, I don't care for his writing. So, like I said... If you weren't going to tell us how that secondary character was going to die, there was no point in having them in the book. And you should have told us how the second main character died. Um, those were two... Uh, I just couldn't get over that. Um, when you find out how other random people die, like there's a guy that goes in and blows himself up in a gym, like you tell us that. So it's not like you don't know how other people die anyway. So just tell us how, how the person dies. You know, maybe it's morbid, but whatever. The other book I didn't like was from Twinkle with Love. I actually DNF'd the book and gave it away after reading like 20, 30 pages. Uh, the main character and maybe the main character grows in the book. I could not stand the main character in the first couple chapters. Uh, she talks about people, the more rich people at her school looking down on her. But to me, she looked down on them and treated them the same way that she gets treated by them. Um... And I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to feel sorry for you, and I didn't. The way that, the way that you were talking about these other people is just as much bullying as they do to you, in my opinion. Um, and it's also your typical YA contemporary romance. How you think it's going to end is probably how it's going to end. I flipped to the end of the book, so I didn't have to read the rest of the crap, and I was right. So that was another book that I just didn't care for in 2018. But guys, that's really it for my 2018. And like I said, for 2019, my main goal is to read. Of course, with the channel, I would like to grow the channel. Um, I've been running some ideas through my head of some other things I could do with the channel. Um, maybe off of YouTube, but we'll see if I do those or not. Uh, or if I want to do them, I got to think about it more. It's just something I started thinking about. But I hope you had a, a great 2018. Tell me down below a couple of your favorite books from 2018. And also tell me a couple books that you didn't like in 2018. Um, and if you can, in a couple sentences or one or two sentences, tell me just why you didn't care for them. Add to my TBR down below. So tell me your favorites. Tell me ones you didn't like. Uh, if you have any questions about 2018 for me, um, have any questions about this channel going forward in 2019, let me know. But that's all I got for y'all today, guys. I hope to have uh, another. I hope to have a review for you soon, since I haven't read a book in a while. I don't like talking about books I'm reading because I feel like I jinx myself and I become disinterested in the book as soon as I start telling people about it if I'm not done reading it. So if you' curious why I never give you progress reports, that's why. Um, but hope to be back with another video soon. Thank you for sticking around with this little hiatus that I had, this few week hiatus that I had. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You know, let's, I think I'm ne almost near 100 subscribers. Let's see if we can hit 100 subscribers. Um, I'll pop the thing up phew, right here where you can subscribe. YouTube also says phew, that you'll like this video right here. And until next time, guys, keep reading. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, peoples.